As of 2021, planet Earth is currently experiencing the least pristine night sky in recorded history. Prior to the development of artificial lighting, the naked human eye could see up to 6,000 stars on a clear, moonless night. Today, there are only a few locations left on Earth's landmasses, mostly isolated in a few dark sky preserves or where professional observatories are located, where light pollution from the ground doesn't severely reduce what the human eye can see. The advent of LED lighting and the lack of appropriate fixtures in our global infrastructure continues to worsen this problem, with no relief in sight. However, the last two years have brought with them another crisis for skywatchers and astronomers alike, worsening light pollution from satellites. As large numbers of bright, close satellites are launched to provide a large bandwidth, low-latency global data network, viewers of the night sky, including many astronomical research programs, have a new, non-removable obstacle to contend with. However, the latest development is truly a shocker. NASA has approved a CubeSat mission that will deliberately, flash, planet Earth from space, making it the brightest artificial light pollution point source in history. In astronomy, there are two basic categories of phenomena we can investigate with the observational tools in our arsenal. The problem with satellite pollution is that the presence of these artificial objects severely confound and limit the types of transient phenomena we can detect. The basic problem is that certain signals can only be extracted from the data if they stand out against the noise. For static signals, it's not that big of a deal. If you're looking at an object and a satellite appears in your detector, you can just subtract out the data from when the satellite was present, plus any additional time that your detector is saturated from the trail the satellite left in it. You'll lose some data, but that can be mitigated with longer observing times. However, transient phenomena will suffer drastically. The way that we detect transient phenomena, today with observatories like PanSTARRS and the Zwicky Transient Facility, and in the future with the upcoming Vera Rubin Observatory, is with automated surveys. We take an image of the sky in a certain location, and then a short time later, we take another, identical image, and subtract the two. Anything that's changed, brightened, appeared, disappeared, or moved will be highlighted and stored in a database. The enormous problem is that satellites will create new optical transients, noise sources, that outnumber and outshine the natural sources astronomers are attempting to observe and understand. These inherently hardware problems, worst of all, cannot simply be fixed with software.